Hello and welcome back to Getting Your Money's Worth. I'm Judith West, host, and we're here with our guest Gary Spina, author, teacher, outdoorsman, and with his recent book, The Mountain Man's Field Guide to Grammar. You're a lot, you, Gary, hello, and welcome to the show. It's good to be here, thank you. You've been a lot of things in your life, but on this show, we're going to talk about your being author and teacher, and maybe in a few other things. You took a very unusual or unorthodox career route to teaching. Give us a little background about yourself. Well, I was a little bit of everything. I always wanted to experience things so that I could write. I always wanted to be a writer. Right. Were you a good well, student in school? I was an awful student in school. You were an awful student, but you wanted to be a writer. That's kind of unusual. Continue. Well, I would sit in a classroom and I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to learn grammar. I didn't want to learn English. I would stare out the window and think about the woods and the swamps and the mountains, and I just wanted to be a mountain man. Right. So now that I'm teaching, I can relate to the kids who do the same thing. They stare out the window and they don't want to be in my classroom. Yeah, well, let's talk about, let's talk about this. Um, your, this book, Field Guide to Grammar, how on earth are you teaching grammar, this dry, um, stale subject? And you teach it, and apparently successfully, and certainly you've written a book on it. How do you do that? Well, kids love stories. Everybody loves stories. Right. And I try to um, relate grammar directly to stories. Um, in, in the book, we talk about Local Weed Louie. Local Weed Louie came out of his tent on a cold winter's morning and built a fire in his underwear. What's, what's wrong with this sentence? <laughs> and the kids look at that and they look at me and they think, I'm strange, my stories are strange, but somehow it connects. Uh, and, you t and it teaches. So you make fun, you tell a story about it. I like the way you talk. I wish I had thought of it I, when, I, when I taught. I taught English in my first career, and I, you talk about the parts of speech being like the skeleton of the body, and I thought that was an excellent way of explaining them. I wish I had thought about it. And then you talk about a sentence, how it gives a complete thought, and one example that you gave of a sentence, I'm going to read it because I thought it was so wonderful. You talk about this uh, uh, big Jake who's at a rodeo, have a summer rodeo, and he go, walks around looking for something to drink, which you call hooch, and he meets a woman who's walking around and she's looking for something different called hoochie coochie. And you say, that night, Big Jake got himself hooched up all right. The next morning, he found himself sentenced to painful years of grief with a ferocious, evil-eyed hellcat, the, the woman looking for hoochie coochie, who was yes. now his wife. The big guy may have avoided all that had he understood subjects and sentences beforehand. I thought that was a marvelous way of teaching a sentence. It's a gift that you have, Gary. I try to make it simple. I, I try to make it painless. Uh, I, I teach the sentence from the verb. Everything comes off of the verb. Right. Um, and I tell the kids the verb is your friend. You can talk to the verb. You ask the verb. Uh, who or what, and the verb will tell you the, sen the subject of the sentence. Right. Um, you ask the verb whom or what. And whom? I, never, I don't think anybody ever uses whom anymore. Yeah, but they should. Is it still there? Whom? And, and the verb will tell you the direct object. Right. But you need, you need to ask them in a certain order. Um, yeah, I want to ask you something, Gary. You know, uh, the English language, it's, I, I don't know, it's like, it's, it's almost like, needs a, it's almost comatose. What killed the English language? What killed people speaking in complete sentences and with subjects and verbs? And what happened? Well, there's a lot of things. Uh, political correctness is one. Um, to make language gender neutral. Right. We say there, the uh, possessive um, um, right. I, the pronoun gen there. The gender, yeah. gender neutral instead of saying his or her, her or he right. or she. Always say too many things. Right. I think my, the, what, the thing that I think is the most extreme about gender neutral is calling the hole in the ground a person hole. Yes. <laughs> Which I saw in the paper actually. Uh, I, I guess they don't want to call it a female hole. I can't call it a man hole, so it's a person hole. But also this whole barrage 
um, instant messaging and uh, iming on it. Everything is in shorthand. You is it's perfectly, perfectly acceptable to have you, capital U for you, Y-O-U. All of that, kids learn all of that. Well, beyond that, they, they learn to rely on the internet for, um, not just for research, right. but, and, but for ideas and opinions. Right. I teach journalism and when I have the kids research, naturally they go to the internet. And of course you could follow the trail because you could always figure out where they, they got their information. Right. Right. Uh, but then you find that they also got their opinion from the internet. Like where's the thought process here? Where's the logic that takes you from here to there to there? The kids want to go from A to Z without hitting all the, the letters all in between. All the letters in between, yeah. But you found a way to teach and grammar. Tell me something. Um, teaching today is um, uh, the teacher is important in the classroom, and there's a lot of talk today about not having good teachers in the classroom. What do you think happened to change the caliber of teachers? Well, the teachers who are certified, who come out of the teaching colleges, right are trained to teach, right. but they, if you take a, a, a college graduate with an education degree and they go on to higher uh, education, they go for their masters or their doctorate, mm -hmm. they score lower than people who yes. majored in history right. or the sciences. Right. You yourself didn't train to teach. No, that's right. Right. And you bring to the teaching classroom this rich background of yours, uh, of being um, a policeman. You were a policeman in your a day. Policeman. You were. Uh, what else were you in your day? I was a little of everything. I was well, give a, us an I idea. Was a truck driver. Truck I was, driver. Uh, I was a merchant, a merchant sailor. Right. Um, I joined the merchant marines because I I found out a ship was going to Easter Island in the South Pacific, and I wanted to go there. So I signed on as a deckhand. Right. I was 46 years old. And how old were you? Started teaching. I've been teaching. I guess. Thir Thirteen years. I, so, I guess. You, so what? You were almost fifty when you started teaching. Uh, about, I guess probably, yeah. Right, amazing. But you brought this whole rich background to your teaching career. That's what's lacking today. The teachers, uh -huh. um, you you can be an uh, an expert in your field and not have classroom management skills, and right. you can't teach. Right. Or it could be just the opposite. Or it could be just the opposite. You, you could know everything about teaching, all the buzzwords, all all. Um, all, all the methodology. The but if, if you don't have something solid behind you to teach, then that's just the same effect. You're not getting through to the kids. Well, you've, you're, you, you've, you've, I think, recently retired from teaching. I'm going to after you're going this year. To. But you are teaching at a Catholic high school. Yes. Right? So is it fair to say that you have a select body? Would your style, would your uh, uh, work in the typical urban high school? I began teaching for the Bronx Comprehensive Night High School, public Public school? Public school in the city of New York. Right. Um, I went to um, Washington, D.C., to the Archdiocese of, of Washington to teach Catholic schools um, in, in inner city school. Right. From there, I traveled west to teach uh, at an, uh, on an Indian reservation. Oh, you taught on Indian reservations. Yes. Tell us a little something about that. That was an experience. Yeah. Um, Do the kids ki behave themselves on the, the Indian reservation? Kids are kids. Kids are kids wherever you go. You, you just have to make it, uh, make your lesson relevant to them. Right. You have to see your lesson through their eyes. We, I loved your book. I'm going to hold it up again for everybody. The Mountain Man's Field Guide to Grammar. Uh, Gary is a um, talk about. We talk. On, we talk on this show about not retiring, rewiring. I have to say, you rewired a few times. <laughs> right? Uh, it's a very good example of someone in the that's come into teaching and is doing well and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for right. having me. The show is Getting Your Money's Worth. I'm Judith West, host, and thank you for watching.